Welcome to the first ever virtual graduation ceremony of the socially distanced, loosely held together group of individuals that likely haven't seen each other in about three months. I'd like to thank our audience for attending, even though you're probably watching from your living room couch. I do want to thank you for taking time away from watching TikTok, scrolling Instagram, Twitter, and shopping on Amazon to tune in to our 2020 graduation ceremony. Obviously, our senior year hasn't gone as planned. We are living through a historical event, but as Dr. Seuss says, you have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself in any direction you choose. You're on your own, and you know what you know, and you're the guy who will decide where to go. So although things haven't went to plan lately, you're still able to control how you handle yourself and how you choose to take it from here. Mr. Holiday has always told us E plus R equals O. Events plus responses equal outcome. We all control our responses and our outcomes, so take control of your lives and make the best of them. Congratulations, Class of 2020. Thank you, Mackenzie. Please give our senior class salutatorian, Mackenzie Schmidt, a round of applause. It's my pleasure to welcome you all this afternoon. My name is Dan Curtis, and I'm the principal here at Evergreen High School. The mission of our work here at Evergreen, building on tradition, committed to excellence, cultivating the future. This mission is accomplished by the work done every day by parents, teachers, families, friends, Administrators, paraprofessionals, bus drivers, coaches, custodians, cafeteria personnel, boosters, volunteers, and school secretaries. It truly takes a village. Our most valuable resource, our children, sit before us today awaiting the transition from student to alumni. I'd like to thank all of the parents and families here today for entrusting us with your children, our community's most valuable resource. Congratulations, graduates, on your hard work and accomplishments celebrated today. Please allow me to take a moment to introduce to you the guests in attendance today. Mrs. Nora Kiefer, board president. Mr. Jason Miller, vice president. Mr. Zach Murray, board member. Mr. Don Smith, board member. Mr. Matt Vaculik, board member. Mr. Dave Mack, guest speaker. Mr. Eric Smola, Superintendent. Mrs. Dolores Swineford, Assistant Superintendent and Director of Curriculum. Mr. Brady Rufer, Middle School Principal. Mrs. Jane Dreheim, Elementary School Principal. Mrs. Christy Schmidlin, Director of Special Education. Mrs. Jenny Conrad, Director of Communications. And Mrs. Angela Infante, Director of Technology. As we gather to celebrate the accomplishments of the class of 2020 on the day of their high school graduation, I'd like to take a moment to read a letter I received from Congressman Bob Latta, representative to the United States House of Representatives, serving Ohio's 5th Congressional District. Dear graduating senior, I'm honored to extend my heartfelt congratulations to you upon your graduation from Evergreen High School. Your diploma denotes the achievement of the first of many important goals that life holds in store for you. With confidence and pride, you may now chart a course for your future bountifully measured with success and happiness. We live in challenging times both nationally and internationally. I have full faith and confidence not only in the American people, but also in the liberties that have been so amply endowed upon us by those Americans who came before us. Our ancestors came to this land for many reasons, religious freedom, personal freedom, economic prosperity, and land ownership, just to name a few. Many came with just the clothes on their backs, but all had a dream for a better life for themselves and the generations that followed. When Benjamin Franklin was leaving the Constitutional Convention in Philadelphia in 1787, he was asked by a Philadelphia woman what kind of government the delegates have given to us, to which Franklin replied, a republic, if you can keep it. It is our duty as Americans to pass our freedoms to the next generation and make this country greater and better than we found it. Please make sure that you exercise every right as an American, and this starts with voting. And to vote, you must be registered. I encourage you to fill out your voter registration form you received from the Ohio Secretary of State. 
you will be glad you did. We live in a participatory democracy, and to make it work, you must participate by being informed and voting. Again, congratulations on, on this milestone. May you take full advantage of being an American, and may your future be bright. Sincerely, Bob E. Latta, Member of Congress. Each graduating senior will receive a copy of this letter at our academic awards station. Speaking of taking full advantage of being an American, I'd be remiss if I didn't take a moment to recognize the eight Evergreen seniors who have enlisted in various branches of the United States Armed Forces. We're extremely proud of this group of seniors and we're excited to recognize them not only for their contributions to the Evergreen School community, but also for their service and sacrifice to our great country. Caleb Anthony Badgey, Marine Corps. Jerry Carl Cannon, United States Army. Drew Leon Donald, National Guard. Madison Ray Dukeshire, United States Navy. Jack Michael Etu, National Guard. Cora Rose Overfield, National Guard. Gavin Michael Rodas, National Guard. And Benjamin Philip Schwan, National Guard. Please join me in a round of applause as we recognize and thank our eight enlisted seniors. We salute you for your sacrifice and pray for your safety. With that, I'd like to introduce eight members of the Evergreen Senior Choir led by Mr. Luke Rosen. Thank you. 
Next, please welcome our senior class president, Cameron Reitz, to the stage to address the class of 2020. Hello, class of 2020. I have some reflections and lessons learned that I would like to share with you. The stages of grief are relevant any time we experience a loss. It doesn't have to be a person, place, or thing. That's why the time we lost hurts so much. Because you can't have great loss where you didn't have great love. So, for all of you that said you never loved school, there might be a little falsehood to it. You may not have loved the subjects or the work, but there is a part of it that mattered. It may not have been the same part for all of us, but that's what makes it so awesome. Let me tell you a few of the things that I didn't know mattered to me, because maybe they were the ones that mattered to you too. One of my favorite things that mattered was Miss Uti's first grade class. I learned that teachers also have a sense of humor. I also learned at the elementary school during the tornado drill in third grade, that social distancing does matter, especially for certain bodily functions. Thank you to the person that taught me that. You know who you are. The thing I learned that mattered in middle school, or at least to some of our sixth grade teachers, was that every piece of paper is important. In a certain order, organized and filed neatly, in the same order with little spiral reinforcements on them. Yes, I'm talking about binder checks. After seeing some of our locker bags, the high school might need to reinstate that. Sorry. These moments did not seem like much at the time, but now looking back, they bring me immense joy, a smile to my face, a chuckle, and a lasting memory. I hope you can find the joy in your own little things that mattered. The day was Friday the 13th, March 13th, 2020 to be exact. The day before spring break, I remember asking, what if today is the last day of high school? I asked others if they have this question going through their mind. Their answers were all along the lines of, no way, that's not true. Little did I know that I would actually be right. I, as well as many of you, experienced the first stage of grief, denial. I thought, it's not all over. We will reschedule prom, the musical, the spring sports seasons, and all of a sudden, I realized I couldn't keep track of all the things we would need to reschedule. Anger, this is a big one. Whether it was when we realized the things we all wanted and thought would be rescheduled ended up not happening, or when the year was officially cut short. We all felt anger in our own way. We felt unheard and our feelings pushed aside. Anger, I think we all experienced at some point, but not necessarily about the same things. Some of us made our anger known on social media, in Zoom discussions, and most certainly in our houses. We were angry about the situations that we were not able to control, and we felt like our choices weren't being heard. All we were left with was the power to choose how we reacted. In life, there will always be choices. The one that I hope we all choose is to be kind. In Mr. DeSlover's freshman English class, we learned about cause and effect in more depth. If, insert Blake here, then insert Blake here. I want to talk about the ifs, and more importantly, the what ifs. What if we planned it this way? What if we did it that way? We are bargaining with our families, teachers, and schools, and wondering if we would get our way. I wondered, if we would find happiness if we got our way in those ifs. If we didn't get to formally graduate, then what did we work for for the past 13 years? 
Did we really only go to school to graduate? Or did we go to learn how to be successful in our own way? It was as if our younger selves had started to come out again. What if I clean my room? Then can my friends come over? If I eat the broccoli, can I have ice cream? We all had the realization that things were not going to be the same. And some were changed in ways we did not like. Some of us were very open about how we were feeling. Others of us sat back in disbelief, feeling sad and heartbroken. Everyone felt different, whether it was not getting to go to school or not getting to see our boys basketball team finish the season and play like we know they can. The final stage of grief, acceptance. Some of you may not have reached this stage and that's okay. I'm going to be honest, it was hard for me to get there. Seeing everyone grieve and feel deeply really made me think of how I would be able to inspire you all. The one thing that helped was a quote I found of all places on Facebook. Of all the things we give and take, the things we truly keep are the memories we make. Yes, we had many things taken from us. But think about all the memories we were given the chance to make. The Rolling Stones taught us that you can't always get what you want, but sometimes you get what you need. So, what did we learn? We learned what we truly need, and it's simple. Some of you may have your future all mapped out. Some of you are taking it one day at a time and rolling with the punches. Others may be struggling right now as to where to go next. These three categories are where we all were before now. Some of us just may have changed which category we now fall in. For me, I'm choosing to roll with the flow, to embrace new opportunities, and to take the next step. As our names are announced and we walk across the stage, our next step will be announced for everyone to hear. Let's all remember that this is merely the next step. It is not the entire path. We can change, we can evolve, and we can adapt and take a different path. Our class more than any other class, has shown that this is possible. We only need to take that next step. Congratulations, my friends. We have made history in taking our next step. And that is what truly matters. Congratulations. Students attending Fort County Career Center have completed a highly rigorous and hands-on curriculum, preparing them for professional careers and skilled trades. Evergreen seniors attending Fort County Career Center graduate with experience and certifications in programs such as accounting and business management, carpentry, chef training, cosmetology, electrical, fire and rescue, computer networking, cybersecurity, and visual art. This year's top four county senior as measured by grade point average is Victoria Miller. Victoria has completed the veterinary assistant program at four county and I would ask for a round of applause to welcome Victoria to the stage. Hello, my name is Victoria Miller and I'm honored to be given the title of top four county senior. Class of 2020, something we have all been called since kindergarten, it is finally the moment we have all been looking forward to and working towards since we first stepped foot into elementary school for the first time. Of course, this is not how we wanted our senior year to end, and we certainly do not want to be graduating like this, but I know we have all made the most of it. We, still, we have still made it and we are graduating. I'm so proud of all of us. Some of our class chose to go to Four County Career Center for our junior and senior years of high school. I went there for vet assisting, planning to become a veterinarian in the future, and I officially decided against that, and going to Fort County helped me realize that. Half of our day we would spend in our labs with our lab instructors, learning work and life skills needed for our future jobs and life in general. My instructor, Mrs. Pippin, definitely taught me and everyone else in my lab a lot about how you are not going to just be handed anything you want in life, no matter what it is, a job or just anything 
you might think of. She taught us that we have to work, work for what we want and what we want to achieve. There are many moments I didn't understand why she was so hard on us, but now, looking back on it, I understand completely. Now, Fort County is much bigger school than Evergreen. It was a, like a culture shock, if you want to call it that. Um, the graduating class of Fort County is 399 compared to how small our graduating class is. is it's very different. I've always wanted to go to Fort County since I first heard about it. I've always thought of it as a head start to become a veterinarian, but like I've said, I am no longer becoming a veterinarian, but a wildlife biologist, and Four County showed me all the career opportunities that are open to me. The skills that I've learned for Four County have showed me that I can definitely use like the work and life skills, but they not for veterinarian, because since I'm becoming a wildlife biologist, I cannot use those vet skills, but I can definitely use all the life skills. I have met people in both schools that I know I'm going, that are going to be in my life for the, for the rest of it. If you have people like that who come to mind, hold on to them. You have no idea what they can help you with just by being there for you. One final thing I want to say is do what makes you happy and not what will make others happy. It is your life and you have to think of your own mental health if you ever want to be truly happy. And with that said, thank you for listening and congratulations to my fellow class of 2020. This year, Evergreen High School has four students who have maintained a 4.0 grade point average over the course of the first seven semesters at Evergreen High School. This year's valedictorians are Naomi Brand, Asia Lynn Gench, Chandler Reitz, and Colin Schuster. Please join me in welcoming our first valedictorian speaker, Asia Lynn Gench, to the stage. Throughout our time here at Evergreen, the last 13 years for most of us, we have had experiences that have crushed us, challenged us, and shaped us into the people we are and who we will one day be. Some memories we will cherish forever and some we will try our hardest to forget. Laughs were shared, friends were made, and victories were celebrated. I am so lucky to graduate with the same people I started kindergarten with. We all grew up together, and I think that's a really cool thing. This place, these people, this community, it's special. This school has taken everything out of me for the better part of my life, sometimes spending more time here than at my own house. But I'm so thankful for everything that came of it. Class of 2020, we made it. Never forget where you came from, just a small school in the middle of a cornfield. Over the years, we sure did learn a lot, didn't we? We learned the Pythagorean theorem. We learned that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. We memorized the quadratic formula and so many other core curriculum lessons that we won't ever use again. As we enter adulthood, there will no longer be any report cards or test scores to measure our success. The great thing about success is that it's relative. Like so many other things in this life, there is no finish line or checkpoint you have to reach. We're all just trying our best to navigate our way through this messy and unpredictable world. Thankfully, our time in high school was filled with lessons outside the classroom. At Evergreen High School, where Mrs. Nagy will always greet you with a smile, we experienced firsthand what it looked like to keep things lighthearted and fun, to build relationships, to act selflessly and always lend a helping hand, to juggle multiple responsibilities, to truly love what you do, and to show unwavering support for your community. Special shout out to Jose for all the fist bumps and high fives over the years. We also learned that the most useful life lessons and stories come from asking your teacher about their personal life to get off topic and avoid doing work. Mrs. Simbolin is the best person to do this with, by the way. The teachers and the rest of the staff at Evergreen have made a lasting impact on me and I thank them for everything. Thank you, Mrs. Meyer, for everything you've done for me in this short time here. I really appreciate you. Whether they knew it or not, they were always teaching me and not just about the stuff they were paid to. I quite literally owe this honor of valedictorian to them. Thank you for being more than teachers to me and pushing me to be better both in and out of the classroom. Since this speech is meant to leave my classmates with some sort of direction, inspiration, or guidance, I can only think to revert back to the values my mother raised me with. Peace, love, open-mindedness, and the belief that everything is just gonna work out. All things that make up the Beatles music. Throughout our time here at Evergreen, there have been multiple hard days nights and it sometimes even felt like we were working eight days a week to stay on track. On multiple occasions, we've screamed help, I need someone, and reminded ourselves that it won't be long until we're done. But we made it here. 
kind of all together now, by always getting better all the time. I know we all got by with a little help from our friends, and I know that if I needed someone, they'd always be there. I know I'll often stop and think about all of my classmates, even when I'm 64. Yesterday, all our troubles seemed so far away, but here we are today, about to take on the long and winding road of life. It won't be long now before we head our separate ways, here, there, and everywhere, maybe even across the universe. With love from me to you, good luck with life, my friends. I wish you all the best. Here are my final words of wisdom. Put good into the world, never stop learning, try not to suck, and just let it be, because life goes on. Please welcome our next valedictorian to the stage, Naomi Brand. All right, guys, I'm going to be honest. I'm really not that smart, just good at studying. As most of my friends know, I lack in the common sense department. But the one thing that I do know is that some of my fondest memories came from experiences outside of the classroom. I had never played a sport until seventh grade, but I'm so glad that I did. Because without sports, I really don't think that I would have very many friends. That may sound cheesy, but it is so true, and I think it is safe to say that goes for a lot of people. As freshmen and as sophomores, we made friends that were older than us, that we looked up to, and that we aspired to be like. As juniors and seniors, we started to become those same role models. It can be a long four years, and not everyone that you played with your freshman year will stay with it to the end. To Kennedy, Savannah, and Nicole, you guys were the constant through all of the good times and the bad times that we faced in both volleyball and basketball. Coming in as tiny freshmen, we were terrified, but we always had each other to lean on. That is the best part about sports, camaraderie. Spending a countless number of hours together, whether it was during summer open gyms, daily practices, pregame meals and dance parties, and hotel, hotel room shenanigans, it felt like we were always together. I saw on Twitter once that family is not necessarily blood, was instead who you would bleed for. That could not be more true. Our teammates became our best friends and our family. Sports brought us together and gave us countless memories and stories to tell our kids one day. For the girls I was given the opportunity to play with, here are some of my favorite memories. Symbolin accidentally pulling the fire alarm during the middle of practice. Schmidt trying to get the opposing players to admit to the ref that they touched the ball last. Lori threatening us to have to stand face to face with the football players if we didn't communicate on the court. When we waited for an hour in the parking lot waiting for our bus to take us to Genora for our sectional game and ended up having to drive ourselves. Going to Florida and living in the same room with my senior gals for about a week. Volleyball cookouts where we all ate way too much food. Getting to do big sister and little sister during volleyball with my girl Lucy. Symbol and getting lost during just about every trip we took, specifically to Notre Dame and in Amish country. Winning our league championship game against Brian when the power went out just like High School Musical during the second set. Whether you're playing the sport or are cheering in the stands, sports are easily some of the best parts of high school. Being able to be in the student section is an opportunity that every student should take advantage of. There is nothing that matches the thrill of a big game and packing the big house or the stands in Simon Field to support the team. We will always remember what it was like to be at Central Catholic when we hit the buzzer beater to play for the regional finals. It was electric. The boys season ended in a way that no one expected, but the school and the community could not be more proud. Everyone looks forward to football season and Friday night lights. The boys show up to school in their jerseys and Schmidt gets the whole school excited for the game. The band plays their chants and tunes and the cheerleaders lead the crowd and student section in cheers. Nothing beats the energy that comes from a win on a Friday night. Just like this year when we faced Swanton, we showed up to their field in our beat Swanton shirts and the boys brought home a big win for Viking Nation. This year I was given the chance to be a water girl for the football team along with a few of my friends. Rain or shine, we made so many memories cheering on the boys. Truly an experience I will never forget. High school sports brings so many opportunities to make friends and make the best memories. It doesn't matter if you are playing the sport or if you are in the student section cheering for the team. Sports will be a part of high school that I will miss the most, and I know that many other seniors feel the same. So my advice to the underclassmen is to get involved with the sport to Evergreen. If you want to play a sport, do it. The experiences you will have and the lessons you will learn will stick with you throughout your life. For those not playing the sport, go to the games, whether it's football, volleyball, basketball, or any others. Show your school pride and cheer on our athletes. Don't pass up the chances you have to get involved. I know everyone says that high school flies, but standing here now, I can tell you that it really does. 
To my teachers, classmates, and fellow seniors, I want to thank you for making my years at Evergreen some of the best years of my life. Coming to this school in fifth grade was so scary, but now this place has been my home for eight years, and it can be a little scary to think about leaving it. This school and community has taught me so much. A major lesson that I have learned during my time here is that I have to answer to any of the following names, Naomi, Nicole, or Twin. More importantly, we have all learned lessons that will stick with us for the rest of our lives. This is our home. The people in this community have prepared us for the future. Class of 2020, let's make them proud. Please join me in welcoming our next valedictorian speaker, Colin Schuster. Well guys, we made it. I know a giant curveball got thrown into our senior year, but here we are, all of us together, virtually anyways. As hard as these past few months have been, being apart from friends and family, I'm sure we've all had time to sit and think about everything, about memories, hardships, things we wish we would have appreciated more, things we wish we would have done, and people we wish we would have seen one last time. I know I have been. But this whole turn of events isn't necessarily a bad thing. I mean, step back and look at our lives. Most of us were born the year the Twin Towers fell, and we're graduating during a pandemic. We managed to make it through middle school, the most awkward years of our lives, to make new friends once you found the crowd you wanted to roll with. And we learned to stop caring about what everyone thought of you, because it doesn't matter. Just be yourself and the people who love you will stick around. But how do we get here? It surely wasn't by ourselves. Think about it. Who's been here to support you in everything you do? Who's given you a shoulder to cry on when you bombed a test you thought you'd ace? Who cheered for you on senior night? Who teased you about a crush you had? Your family, your mom and dad, your grandma and grandpa. They never gave up on you and they were always there to pick you up, dust you off, and give you that little push you needed to keep going. I'm sure we've all been more rude to our parents than we should have been, but they stuck by our side anyways and they always will. So say you're sorry for being a jerk and saying what you did that last argument. Apologize for not listening to their advice all the time. Thank them for everything they do and give them a hug because trust me, they might need it just as much as you did once. And you can't forget about your friends. I'm not sure if I can speak for everyone, but I know I ended up with different friends than those I had in elementary school. And honestly, that's okay with me because people change. And like I said, the true friends will stick around. Let me use Hannah as an example for me. I didn't become friends with her until seventh grade and Mr. Lyons AA. And we were never super close until high school. Whenever I went through a breakup, I never wanted to be around my family. Hannah was the one who helped cheer me up and take my mind off things. If I had a hard choice to make, she was honest and told me what she thought, but she never pushed too hard. Whenever I felt like the world was against me, she was there with an ear to rant to, a hug, some cookies, and a horror movie to make it feel like everything was right in the world once again. Without our friends, we wouldn't be where we are either. Friends do things parents can't do. Friends just seem to understand more, and it sure is nice feeling like someone understands your problems, especially when they're always on your side. So thank a friend for being honest and for caring about you, because they helped you get here too. Now that you've thanked your friends and family, keep succeeding, because they've been here for you this long. I promise they'll keep supporting you. As cliche as it sounds, chase your dreams with everything you've got. Set your standards high and keep them there. If you want to change them, only make them higher. Never lessen yourself for anything or for anyone. And if you make a mistake, don't stop. Some of the best lessons we will ever learn are from our mistakes and our failures. And never do something just because. Always have a purpose. I'll leave you guys with a quote from the most inspirational book I've ever read, Oh, the Places You'll Go, by the man himself, Dr. Seuss. You'll get mixed up, of course, as you already know. You'll get mixed up with many strange birds as you go. So be sure when you step, step with care and great tact, and remember that life's a great balancing act. Just never forget to be dexterous and deft, and never mix up your right foot with your left. And will you succeed? Yes, you will indeed, 98 and 3 fourths percent guaranteed. Kid, you'll move mountains. So, be your name Buxbum, or Bixby, or Bray, or Mordecai, Alley, Van Allen, O'Shea. You're off to great places, today is your day. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. Please join me in welcoming our fourth valedictorian, Chandler Reitz. Good morning, Evergreen High School. Today is Sunday, May 31st. Lunch for today is featuring, oh, wait, wait a minute, sorry. Wrong speech, I got caught up doing the morning announcements. Uh, let's just see here. Okay, here we go. Well, we finally did it. We made our way to graduation. Many of us have past memories of watching brothers Sisters and close friends walk across this very stage 
to receive their diplomas and get a picture taken by Mr. Siefker. It was tradition to hear the senior choir members sing at the ceremony. Even the time before graduation was planned. We would have had our last band concert, which this year was going to be at Centennial Terrace. And who can, cannot forget about the band awards night, where many would sit through hours of awards and continue to stay for the senior awards, where Mr. Lyons and Stearman would present a personalized gift to each senior. Many of us could not wait for senior year to start. Everything was going according to plan. Fall sports finished smoothly. We had our homecoming, and we had our senior night out on the football field. Many of us were anxious for what 2020 would bring, a time that we always looked towards for the end of our high school journey and the beginning of our adult lives. If he told me that Kobe Bryant would tragically pass away, a random stranger would enter our school, a rag would catch on fire that will cancel school for a day, and that the last quarter I will spend in high school would be from the comfort of my childhood bedroom. I would not have believed you at all. I would have scoffed at that shocking turn of events and said, it isn't true, that's impossible. But 2020 came around. And sure enough, all those things happened. Our boys basketball team was heading towards getting a spot in the final four of the state tournament and taking all of us with them on their journey until their season was cut abruptly short. The entire school was so pumped up to see another dunk from Mason Leffler and Nate Brighton dominating the post to lead us into victory. Spring season was just around the corner and our track team had a fair shot at winning leagues. Softball and baseball teams were gearing up for another epic season on the mounds. Then the corona struck. Some of us had academic concerns like, what will happen to my grades? What about the AP exams? Does my internet work? Some asked, are spring sports canceled? What about the musical? And what did I leave in my locker? Yee. Yeah. But I'm sure none of us would have predicted that March 13th would be the last time we got to see our friends on a normal day. We started to wonder about how graduation would change from the traditional norms. To be honest, the first thing I thought of when I heard that graduation would be changed was, well, at least the band kids don't have to play pomp and circumstance for the millionth time in a row. Trust me, it gets a little old real fast. But once you hear it at graduation, it regains the nostalgia that it holds. And I would want to hear it played for our own class. I also thought, what about senior skip day? Will we at least have that? I realized shortly afterwards that we had much more than a senior skip day more like a senior skip quarter. But then the despair hit. I realized that our world has been turned upside down, leaving us uncertain about what will happen in the future. But one thing is for certain, our world will never be the same. We started to question our national and global leadership we lashed out saying, you were supposed to protect us from this. And then we break down. We weep over our lost future and panic over what will come in the aftermath of this crisis. Some of us were able to continue our normal lives, only wearing masks and social distancing, while others lost everything, unable to work and relying on the grace of others just to get by. But we rose to the occasion and helped each other. We shopped and supported our local businesses like the Country Charm, St. Mary's Meats, and the Vikings Pizzeria, and so many others. We gave the necessary daycare to parents who needed to work to get by financially. Our community came together like it always has in times of crisis. But even with that, many of us still wonder 
What happens now? The answer is that we adapt and overcome. We, we may not be able to walk on this stage like we usually do. Our path has changed, both for the better and worse. I believe that a lot of good can come from this crisis. We focused on our community, which was already great. And we support our local businesses just like they have always supported us. We will be better prepared for the uncertainty of life itself. When we do not do well on an exam or not get that job that we wanted, we can look back to this time. We will be able to tell our children and grandchildren about the time that we had a drive through graduation and doing Zoom calls with our teachers instead of being in person. We could tell them that some of our wishes did come true about school. We got to sleep in and PJ day was every day. I actually want to take a moment to thank the staff here at Evergreen for adapting to online schooling, remaining positive, and keeping a bit of normalcy in order in this time of chaos and panic. Also, thank you to our essential workers for making sacrifices to keep life going. A quote from Oscar Wilde really resonated with me during this quarantine. It is, experience is the hardest kind of teacher. It gives you the test first and the lesson afterwards. We indeed had a big test, probably even bigger than the ACT and AP exams. But the lessons that we learn will allow us to grow and adapt to life's many challenges and to handle the unexpected with grace and compassion for others. We may not understand why this virus has changed our world, but will allow us to make the necessary changes so our future generations can live in a better tomorrow. I hope that the one thing that we take from this experience. It is that you matter and that we matter to each other. We would all take away different things from our high school experiences. I'll definitely miss Handshake Fridays with Mr. Lyons, watching the government mock election, hearing Eric Belt say, what to do baby, or call me the quiz team guy. I'll also miss having Joe Bly, the evergreen guy, offer some life-changing advice and excellent stories, or hearing him sing all four parts of leaving on a jet plane in choir. It is those little things that I probably will miss most. Some of us will move away and look back fondly at our own high school experience, where we all support one another in times of crisis and need. I will miss the classes and teachers that had a huge impact on me. From Mr. Wagner's trick class, when I realized that maybe studying is necessary after I failed perhaps the easiest quiz in trig. I will miss calculus, where each test was in the most infamous font, Comic Sans. I will miss physics, where I got my shoes stuck in a desk and Joe Bly will never let me hear the end of it. I will miss government, where I started to appreciate helping and supporting our community through community service. I will also miss chemistry with Mr. Diamond, where we got to burn steel wool multiple times, and his Bio 2 class, where we watched the movie Outbreak, which is ironic, considering that we are living it currently. I will miss this school, my community, and my fellow classmates. I hope that you will take your high school experiences, both good and bad, to heart and use them to grow and adapt to this crazy concept known as adulting. I cannot wait for the bright future that is ahead of all of us. I never got to finish my last morning announcement, so I figured it would be an excellent conclusion to my speech today. Series 
is out. And we, the class of 2020, are also out for the final time. Thank you. Next, I have the pleasure of introducing this year's guest speaker. I'd like to introduce our guest speaker, Dave Mack. David is currently the Chief of Police for the Napoleon Police Department. David is an Evergreen High School alumni from gra graduating class 1991. During his time at Evergreen, he was a member of the football and wrestling teams and participated in drama and the school newspaper. He went on after high school to further his studies at the Defiance College, where he earned a bachelor's degree in criminal justice in 1995. While at the Defiance College, he was a four-year starter and letter winner on the football team while earning multiple honors on campus. After college, Dave was hired by the Napoleon Police Department in 1995 and has remained there for nearly 25 years. He has been promoted three times to becoming chief in 2017. He also has received six commendations in these 25 years. In 2015, he was awarded by the now Governor of Ohio as Ohio CIT Officer of the Year. CIT stand, stands as Crisis Intervention Trained, which he has worked to start what is now known as the Four County Crisis Intervention Training. This training is for police, fire, EMT, probation officers, and local dispatchers. Since its inception, he has, developed, he has helped to train over 100 local police officers on how to better serve the community during a mental health crisis. He also has remained involved in the high school community and worked to help close the gaps between the community and law enforcement, especially with the youth of the community. He currently is an assistant football coach and has been for, for many years. He also has coached at all levels of youth baseball up to eighth grade during his life in Napoleon. He currently is the Napoleon Athletic Boosters president. In addition, Dave also serves as a commander for the Northwest State Community College Law Enforcement Academy and has taught at the college in the academy since approximately 2000. He and his wife, Roberta, have three teenagers themselves, one that is currently enrolled at Bowling Green Flight School and two that are in high school in the city of Napoleon. Please join me in welcoming Chief Dave Mack. Good afternoon to the graduates of 2020, your friends, your family, and the esteemed faculty of the Evergreen High School. I want to first thank uh, Principal Curtis and the Board of Education for giving me this opportunity and great honor to speak to you and your families today on such a special event in your lives. 2020, it's been a journey for all of us thus far. When I first was asked to speak several months ago to you on this day, I thought, not a problem. However, as the spring unfolded, and I became more and more anxious about what would I be speaking to you today. I kept asking myself, what could I say that would be relatable to what the senior class has went through in the last several months? The truth is, after much reflection, I have concluded that we have a lot of similarities in life that we have experienced in the last several months than in any other time in history recently. This alikeness, these similarities, or what I would like to talk to you about today. I reflected on my time within the halls of Evergreen High School. I remembered on how my education at Evergreen did in fact prepare me for my future. I learned how to wire an electrical box, how to make a mechanical drawing, how to build something. I also learned how to complete with opponents that were in most cases from bigger schools. I learned how to write articles for the newspaper I learned math, I learned history, I learned a lot about government. I learned how to appreciate the fine arts. I hoped at that time that knowing some of this would help me in my future and what my plans were for my life, but honestly I wasn't sure, as I was the first one to go to college for my family and had no experiences to draw that from. In fact, what I have since learned was that all of these topics and how they were taught to me from the caring staff who truly wanted to see me succeed, 
not only help me in my future, but continue to help me daily. Every day of my career, now even almost 30 years later, I am using these skills that I learned within the hallways of Evergreen High School in many ways. I use them to complete projects around the house, although I'm often reminded by my family, especially my daughter, that I don't do it enough sometimes, but I do draw my knowledge in a way that helps me draw and document everything from crime scenes to crash scenes that was learned in mechanical drawing. I use my writing skills every day to write reports, briefs, press releases, and so many other tasks. I rely on my mathematical knowledge that I gained from Evergreen to help me run a department with a significant budget. What I found is what I learned here in these hallways so long ago did prepare me for the needs of what I am experiencing today. I want you to feel confident that your teachers, your coaches, and the administration of this building have given you the same type of preparation. I want you to celebrate not only your graduation from Evergreen, but also the experiences and memories that you have while attending Evergreen. Celebrate these with your families, with your friends. Celebrate your ability to overcome the hurdles that you've already had to get over this year alone. Do not let the last three months of your senior year define who you are. Let it identify for who you have become because of it. Allow this to be a very positive thing. Let the memories of happiness that you will remember for many years to come. Many of us can barely remember our graduation, even though it was a very special moment in our lives at that time. However, I do not think this senior class will soon forget this year. There have been other significant events in history that our loved ones will also never forget, like an armed conflict or 9-11. But this year too will live forever in the history books. Your school, your parents, your grandparents, and yes, you were thrusted into a global pandemic that has changed life as we've known it. Ask your parents, your grandparents, and your great-grandparents what experience they had that prepared them for whichever world crisis they had to go through. They will undoubtedly will respond with, we had none. We just knew we had to get through it. These moments in time will not only make you stronger, but they will make you, the class of 2020, ready to face the challenges that lay ahead of our nation and our world. Prior to COVID-19, Evergreen was celebrating a very special time in its basketball history. When overnight, it went from what was most likely the best time of your life, if you were an athlete, of your life, if you were a student, of your life, if you were a parent, to the next morning being devastated, disappointed, frustrated, and most likely angry. This is one program of many within the halls of this school that had plans, that had goals, and had lots of excitement around it. I did a quick Google online search and I learned from Wipikidia of all places. Evergreen High School has almost half the school involved in choir and band as well. That is something to be proud of. It is simply amazing and is not seen in many schools. When you have successful programs, whether they are on a playing surface like a field, a gymnasium, or a concert hall, or in the classroom, there is one common thread between all these types of success. This is a sense of family. When you have that feeling in your program, in your classroom, and in your halls, in your company, and in your own home. You will do anything for each other. Family, it's not a word that can be spoke lightheartedly. This is a word that has endless descriptions. The sense of family does not come easy, and it requires the same amount of work from everyone. This is what the senior class needs to hold on to. This is what the classmates below them need to continue in the evergreen tradition. Embrace the love your families have had for you, See how that has helped you to become the person you are today. Appreciate them 
as they have worked to help you celebrate such a special moment in your lives. S so many different unique ways this year. Reflect on the good from the last, last several months. Families have spent more time together. I'm sure many of your families are like mine and you have eaten more meals together than you had in the last couple years. Life tends to speed away from us with all the sports, all the travel teams, all the performances, all the competitions that we absolutely must compete in or participate in. We have been reminded that family is the priority. As Governor DeWine has said on many occasions recently, we are in this together. So together is how we're going to navigate the future. As you reflect on this year and the three that came before it, reflect today not on what if I could have played that last game, what if I could have ran that last race, or what if I could have performed one last time. But reflect on everything that was accomplished. Thank those who supported you through the last several years, those who were by your side, those who were responsible for mentoring you, and those who chose to stand by your side no matter what. Give them a hug, a smile, and a kiss. When life changes rapidly in the future again on you, do not lose the lessons that you, sh that you have learned today during the 2020 senior year. Do not forget the family is the reason we are the individuals that we are. Family is going to be one of the few things still standing when the chips are down again. You will most definitely have adversity in, adversity in your future. You will have times you will not get the grade, you will not get the job, or you will not have the crop that you thought was going to take away all your problems and answer all your prayers. Look to your family in these moments for the same support they have shown you this year. I hope you have heard many times within the last 12 years of your education that you are the future, because you truly are. The future is within your control. Even as 18 or 19 year olds, the future is yours to change and to mold. Become leaders in your communities, become leaders in your churches, become leaders within the future careers that you are going to hold and have become leaders in your personal lives. If you remember nothing else from my speech, please remember, become a leader. That's my challenge to you, the senior class of 2020. As Abraham Lincoln once said, the best way to predict the future is to create it. When you become a leader and every job or career path has its leaders, you can affect change. So the question remains, how do you prepare to be a leader? Leadership can be viewed in many ways. It is not always a title. It is certainly not always a rank. It is a person who's willing to do what's right when wrong's staring them in the face. When peer pressure or social pressure is telling them to take a different route. When this is done, we are enhancing our capacity from the bonds of family, the teamwork of friends, the dedication to a cause higher than oneself, the heat of battlefield, and the love of humanity. Next, I will ask you to never stop learning. Celebrate your graduation as not an end of your learning, but a beginning of your learning. It does not matter what your next path is, whether it's in the workforce, whether it's higher education, whether it's the armed services. It does matter whether you keep learning or not. Please never allow yourself to get into a place in your life where you could have learned something and you chose not to. Let this be your promise to yourselves. As I reflected over the last couple months, I found myself recalling on what Kevin Gilmartin, an author, once said as he was describing the emotional survival in, a, in the face of adversity. Remember what you can control, your integrity, your professionalism, and how well you do the job that you've been assigned. That statement can be applied with a broad brush and can be applied in every profession every line of work, and every aspect of your lives. All three points are within your control and only within your control. If you follow this, I have no doubt that no matter what your career path is, you will have a great future that will have proud, humble, and satisfying moments. In closing, I want to thank the Evergreen community for embracing this celebration, for helping your graduate persevere through this pandemic for helping them become the leaders that they already have. I want to thank the Evergreen staff for embracing a new and unchartered role in their careers, 
for rising to the occasion to continue the education of the students who are our future. I want to thank, as well, the many Evergreen teachers, staff, and administration that I had many, many days ago who made sure I was ready for my future. I especially want to congratulate the young men and women who this event is all about. You have worked so hard to get to this moment and you deserve everything. I will leave you with one final quote in the words of John F. Kennedy. Change is the law of life and those who look to the past or present are certain to miss their future. Good luck, congratulations, and have a great future. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mack. It is tradition here at Evergreen to have the passing of the scroll for the graduating, from graduating class president Cameron Reitz to this year's junior class president, Gina Silvestri. Will Gina and Cameron please come forward? As president of the class of 2021, it is with great honor that I accept the Evergreen Senior Scroll. On behalf of myself and my fellow officers, we will strive to uphold the standards of integrity and continue the tradition of excellence at this high school. We now extend our sincerest congratulations to the graduating class of 2020 and wish them success and happiness in the future. I'd like to take a moment to highlight several academic honors displayed by our graduates here today. Our graduates are seated before us with various cords and medallions that represent significant academic accomplishments that are listed in your program. Those graduates wearing an honors medallion will graduate with a cumulative 3.75 grade point average or higher. Please join me in a round of applause as we congratulate those graduates who have earned an honors medallion. Graduates receiving an honors diploma have completed four credits in English, math, science, and social studies, and the student must have taken an advanced math class, chemistry and physics, three years of a foreign language, at least one credit of fine arts, and also receive at least a 3.5 cumulative GPA and a composite score of a 27 or higher on the ACT. Please join me in congratulating those graduates who will be receiving an honors diploma. Members of the Evergreen Chapter of the National Honor Society are decorated with special honors cords. Members of the National Honor so Society are chosen not only because of their accomplishments in the area of academics, but also in their ability to display characteristics of service, leadership, and character in and around the community. Please join me in congratulating those graduates who are senior members of the National Honor Society. This year we have a new honor. Several students are wearing special red cords. Students wearing red graduation cords have donated blood at least two times over the course of their high school career. These graduation cords were provided by the American Red Cross to highlight graduating seniors who have participated in blood donation while at Evergreen. We thank these six graduating seniors for their desire and commitment to provide life-saving donation and bolstering the community blood supply. Please join me in thanking our six graduates who are wearing red cords at graduation today. At this time, it's my great pleasure to begin the presentation of the diplomas. We will be taking professional photos of each of our graduates and sending one photo home with each family. Additional photos will be available online for purchase. Details will be included in the mailer. Caitlin Renee Alaminius. Caitlin has finished the Fire and Rescue Program at Four County Career Center. She hopes to be employed full-time as a firefighter EMT.
Caleb Anthony Badgey. Caleb has enlisted in the United States Marine Corps. Anastasia Sue Baker. Annie will continue her education at the University of Toledo. She will be double majoring in political science and criminal justice while minoring in global studies. Connor Ansel Barchi. Connor will continue his education at the University of Toledo, majoring in nursing with the goal of becoming a registered certified nurse anesthetist. Nicholas Robert Beamer. Nick will be attending the University of Finley where he will major in business administration. Emma Louise Bettinger. Emma will be pursuing a career in the electrical trades. Garrett Melvin Betts. Garrett will attend the University of Toledo where he will major in mechanical engineering. Kyle John Bowser. Kyle has completed the networking and cybersecurity program at Four County Career Center. He is planning to enter the workforce after graduation. Naomi Noreen Brand. Naomi will continue her education at the University of Toledo in the fall. Nicole Marie Brand. Nicole will attend the University of Toledo where she will major in education in the fall. Nathan Robert Brighton. Nathan will be attending Concordia University in Ann Arbor, where he will major in marketing and will also be a member of the Concordia men's basketball team. Michaela Margaret Burkhart. Michaela has completed her accounting and business management program at Four County Career Center and will continue her studies at Northwest State Community College where she will major in marketing. Eric Matthew Butts. Eric is currently deciding between trade school or attending college where he would major in statistics. Claire Elise Conrad. Claire will continue her education at Bowling Green State University, where she will major in middle childhood education. Cassidy Danielle Cook. Cassidy will be attending the University of Toledo this fall. Tristan James Cordray. Tristan is, cur is currently in the process of deciding his future plans. Courtney Edith Kautz. Courtney plans to enter the workforce full time after graduation. Ashley Nicole Kutcher. Ashley will be attending Davenport University where she will major in nursing. Mm -hmm. 
Drew Leon Donald. Drew has joined the Ohio National Guard and will attend the University of Toledo, where he will major in criminal justice. Madison Ray Dukeshire. Madison will be entering the United States Navy after graduation. Ethan Robert Dunn. Ethan will be joining the workforce full time after graduation. Michael Allen DeMarkowski. Michael has completed the electrical program at Four County Career Center and will be entering into the electrical trades following graduation. Jack Michael Etu. Jack will be joining the Colorado Air National Guard and attending Colorado State University where he will major in engineering. Sydney Ellen Fillinger. Sydney will attend Bowling Green State University where she will major in music education. Brian Michael Floyd. Brian is currently undecided, but he's looking forward to deciding his plans after graduation. Brian Michael Fritch. Brian will be attending the University of Toledo where he will major in business. Matthew Fritch. Matthew will enter the workforce at Fritch Farms as a fifth generation farmer with plans to one day take over the operation of the family business. Asia Lynn Joe Gench. Asia Lynn will attend Miami University of Ohio in their pre-physical therapy program with a major in kinesiology. Alexandra Cecilia Gillen. Alexandra will attend the University of Toledo and will be majoring in the biological sciences. Her goal is to then attend the Ohio State University where she will study to become an orthodontist. Cole Roger Gillen. Cole plans to join the Army and pursue a career in the medical profession after graduation. Alexis Ann Godey. Alexis will continue her studies at the University of Toledo, where she will major in nursing. She hopes to one day work as a flight nurse. Kayla Morgan Grant. Kayla will enroll at the Owens Community College and will be major in, majoring in nursing after graduation. Ethan Bryce Halpin. Ethan has completed the Building Trades and Carpentry program at Four County Career Center he will join the workforce in the carpentry profession after graduation. Brandon Christopher Hassan. Brandon will be attending the University of Toledo and will be majoring in chemical engineering. Connor Joseph Hauk. Connor will be attending Bowling Green State University and will be majoring in actuarial science and technology. Michaela Elizabeth Heinchel. 
Michaela will attend the University of Toledo in the fall, majoring in pharmacy. Madison Ray Hines. Madison plans to attend college in the fall. Mason Anthony Henricks. Mason will attend Owens Community College, joining the radiology program in the fall. Julia Renee Herdman. Julia will be attending Owens Community College in the fall and will continue her education at the University of Toledo, majoring in education. Garrett Oliver Holmes. This fall, Garrett will attend Owens Community College where he will major in computer science. Michael Joseph Incorvaya. Michael will be attending the University of Toledo in the fall where he will major in the behavioral sciences. Seth Daniel Kahneman. Seth will be attending Ohio University and will be majoring in finances and analytics in the fall. Karis Jean Keaton. Karis has completed the fire and rescue program at Four County Career Center. She plans to attend Northwest State Community College majoring in nursing while working full time at the Fulton County Manor Nursing Home. Kennedy Jean Kiefer. Kennedy will be attending Kent State University where she will major in nursing. Emily Ann Caracas. Emily will attend the University of Toledo in the fall where she will major in nursing. Alexa Ray Kessler. Alexa will attend Trine University where she will major in mechanical engineering and will also be a member of the Trine cheerleading team. Justin Thomas Krempek. Justin will be joining the workforce full time at Swanton Healthcare after graduation. Jack Logan Crispin. Jack will attend Bethel University where he will major in biology and pre-professional health in the fall. Mason Michael Leffler. Mason will attend college in the fall. Bobby Joe McNicky. Bobby Joe completed the chef training program at Four County Career Center and will attend Baker's College in Port Huron, Michigan for a degree in baking and pastry with future plans of joining the military. Alexander James Majewski. Alexander will attend Trine University where he will major in pre-legal studies. Chloe Lynn Malberg. Chloe has completed the Visual Arts and Design program at Four County Career Center and intends to attend college at Owens Community College in the fall. Marissa Nicole Martin. Marissa has completed the Fire and Rescue program at Four County Career Center and will be attending Northwest State Community College where she will be majoring in Human Services. 
Trinity Taylor Martinez. Trinity will attend the University of Toledo where she will major in medical technology. Hannah Marie Miller. Hannah will be continuing her education at the University of Toledo where she will major in nursing. Morgan Nicole Miller. Morgan has successfully completed the cosmetology program at Four County Career Center and will be joining the workforce full time after graduation. Victoria Lynn Miller. Victoria has completed the veterinarian assistant program at Four County Career Center. She will attend Ball State University and major in zoology and wildlife conservation biology. Levi Lewis Moore. Levi will pursue a career in the operators union after graduation. William Daniel Newcomb. William will be joining the workforce after graduation and hopes to start his own business in agriculture. Tanya Nieto. Tanya will be attending college after graduating from Evergreen. Kelsey Marie Niles. Kelsey will attend the University of Finley this fall where she will double major in English writing and training as well as biology. Haley Marie Nowak. Haley plans to attend the University of Toledo where she will be majoring in nursing in the fall. Cora Rose Overfield. Cora has enlisted in the Air National Guard and will be continuing her studies at the University of Toledo where she will major in nursing. Tyler James Peppers. Tyler plans to enter the trades and will become a pipe fitter after graduation. Gavin Michael Rodas. Gavin has enlisted in the Army National Guard and will attend Bowling Green State University where he will be majoring in interior design. Josephine Paige Rosinski. Josephine will continue her education at the University of Toledo where she will major in business. Zachary Scott Ruck. Zach will be entering the workforce after graduation and hopes to open his own business. Chandler Charles Reitz. Chandler will be attending Trine University, majoring in biomedical engineering. Cameron Elizabeth Reitz. Cameron will be attending the University of Toledo, majoring in medical technology and minoring in music. Shane Aaron Reitz. Shane will be attending college at the University of Toledo, majoring in business.
Mackenzie Jolene Schmidt. Mackenzie will attend Siena Heights University in the fall where she will major in nursing. Bailey Nicole Schoendorf. Bailey will be relocating to Destin, Florida and is currently undecided on her future career and educational plans. Colin Brooke Schuster. Colin will attend the University of Toledo in the fall where she will major in chemical engineering. Jack Patrick Schwab. Jack plans on attending college at the Modern College of Design after graduating from Evergreen High School. Benjamin Philip Schwan. Benjamin will be enlisting in the Army National Guard and also enrolling in college at Kent State in the spring. Reese Owen Serna. Reese plans to pursue a career in the trades after graduation. Jenna Phoenix Shipman. Jenna will attend Northwest State Community College where she will major in radiology. Jacob Anthony Smart. Jacob plans to attend the workforce upon graduation. William Joseph Smithmeyer. William will attend the University of Toledo in the fall where he will major in business. Wyatt Allen Steyer. Wyatt plans to enter the workforce full time after graduation working at GameStop. Brandon Jacob Taylor. Brandon will be opening his own business with a focus on caring for autistic individuals and also photography. Erica Lynn Stassa. Erica will be entering the workforce full time after graduation. Ryan James Stassa. Ryan will be continuing his education at the University of Toledo, where he will major in business communications. Aiden Wyatt Spradlin. Aiden is currently in the process of deciding his future plans. Allison Renee TG. Allison will attend Bowling Green State University where she will major in apparel merchandising and product development. Augustus Maximilian Tipping. Augustus will attend Trine University where he will major in psychology. Savannah Joe Van Ostrand. Savannah will attend Owens Community College where she will major in sonography. Lindsay Ann Wade. Lindsay will be attending Owens Community College 
where she will be a part of the dental hygienist program. Emily Michelle Yunker. Emily will attend Bowling Green State University where she will major in human resources. Congratulations, class of 2020. I would like to commend you on, commend our graduates on a job well done and thank you for your cooperation and leadership during this unexpected school year. Today, you are ready to enter college, the military, the workforce, and a world beyond your home and school. We are confident you have all the resources necessary to achieve your goals and dreams. It has been said, the more you say, the less people remember. With that in mind, I want to leave the class of 2020 with two things to remember. The first is attitude makes all the difference. The philosophy of Charles Swindell sums this up much better than I could. When I was a classroom teacher, I had this posted on the wall and always started the school year discussing this with my students. He said, the longer I live, the more I realize the impact of attitude on my life. Attitude, to me, is more than facts, it is more than just past, than money, than circumstances, failures, successes, than what other people think, say, or do. It is more important than appearance or skill. Attitude will make or break a company, a church, a home. The remarkable thing is we have a choice every day regarding the attitude we will embrace for the day. We cannot change the fact that people will act in a certain way. We cannot change the inevitable. The only thing we can do is play on the one string we have, and that is our attitude. I am convinced that life is 10% what happens to me and 90% how I react to it. And it's the same for you. Each of us are in charge of our attitudes. Second, I challenge you to make an impact. As you depart today with your diploma, leading to new opportunities, that doesn't mean the learning is over. Believe me, the learning has just begun. The choices you are about to face, even the ones that seem insignificant, are creating the impact you will have on the world. Each choice counts, and each choice is a building block, some large and some small, but they contribute to your impact. I encourage you to work hard, take risks, and seize opportunities to make a positive impact on those around you. In the words of Henry Ford, you can't build a reputation on what you are going to do. Whether you choose to go to college, enter the workforce, or join the military, you have the ability to impact future generations. Embrace the opportunities you encounter and hit them head on. Opportunities will often come with challenges, and you have the necessary tools to overcome them. Now go out into the world and create the opportunities you desire in order to make a positive impact. Class of 2020, everyone at Evergreen looks forward to seeing the positive impact you will make. Congratulations and good luck.